need to grow. We need to, it, it, it's not about numbers, but we need to grow. And we need to fellowship, we need to have love, we need to, you know, build up so that in the fullness of time, you can have a place of your own and you're not renting anymore. Amen. 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 So, let me get into the word with you. Um, let us pray. Father, this is your doing, so do it. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Our text, let, let us go to the text. Psalms chapter 30. I, I want a young one, a young one who can read, one of the young children. You see that young lady right there? Yeah, yeah. in the brown. Megan? Megan. Yeah, give her the Bible for me, please. Yep. Psalms 30. <laughs> verse 5. <laughs> For his angel lost for me, for his anger lost for me a moment, for his favor lost a lifetime. Weeping may stay for the night, but rejoicing comes in the morning. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thanks. Amen. Thank you very much. Okay. I'm going to preach on the second half. What does the second half say? Weeping may enjoy for life, joy comes in the morning. That's what I'm going to preach on. All right. And my topic is how long is the night? How long is the night? Um, once again, I want to thank Sister Franklin and my aunt and for coming by here today. Thank you. I, I believe from the depths of my heart that this present existing world would not last forever in spite of what some evolutionists and scientists profess and believe. I still say this present lifestyle is going to come to an end. There is no perhaps, no if, ands, or buts about it. This wicked world cannot remain much longer. If it doesn't destroy itself, we will destroy one another. Every new day testifies of the insanity in our society. Every day you pick up the newspaper, Read the news on TV or seen on TV or on the radio, it is bad news. Yeah. It is hard to get good news anymore. Yeah. That's why I believe that soon and very soon we are going to see King Jesus. Amen. So I, I, as a result of the times in which we are living, I, I need some words of comfort, yes. some words of encouragement, some words of hope and so I come to you again like your mailman, who brings you your mail. But unlike the mailman, I do not have a bill, but a word from the Lord. Amen. Our text was confiscated from uh, Psalms 30, verse 5. This verse is carried over from verse 4 and is a generalization of God's providential order. You know, as Christians, we should always praise the Lord. Amen. And being so blessed by him from day to day, yes, 
God. We should harmonize our lives actively to his will. Yes. You know, there are many reasons why we find ourselves weeping these days. But I want us to focus our attention on this Christian woman, the mother of eight children, who has brought them up in the fear and admonition of God. She has now reached a stage of her life that finds her weeping for one of her children who has departed from the faith and has allowed drugs to dictate his way of life. She's no longer radiant in her going out or her coming in. And even at church, her mind seems to be elsewhere. The sound of a siren brings pain expression to her face. She's aware of the destructiveness of the times in which we are living, and she seeks the Lord daily on behalf of her son. Anyone who would happen to speak with her would most certainly hear her mention her son and her concern for him. She speaks to him, but it seems to go in one ear and come out the next. It seems sometimes as if her prayers aren't even leaving the room, but she continues to call on God on behalf of her son. One Sabbath, he's among the invited guests, and a look of hope seems to caress her face. He attends for a few weeks, and one Sabbath is among those who have stood in giving his heart to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. There is joy for that mother, for her prayers have been answered. Amen. There are other sides to this. For sometimes we weep, but not for long. For many of our sorrows in life are brief, but there are those that stay with us, stay with us so long and leave our days dim for the rest of our journey, that the only way out is through death. Mm -hmm. D-E-A-T-H. This is a text we should commit to memory, for it, it, it can give us a lift when we are down, mm -hmm. and it can help us go through the night experiences of our lives. The psalmist David was acquainted with grief when he penned these words. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. In, in this verse, he seems to be encouraging himself, for he says with a tremor in his voice, Weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. This is a text we should commit to memory for a it should carry us when we are going, it, should, it could help us when we are going through rough times of our lives. It is a foundational text for a child of God that should stabilize us when things get shaky and there is trouble in our lives. It, it should stabilize us if we know the Lord. But we can't be stable unless we know the Lord. Amen. 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 You see, because if we serve the Lord, we will be attacked. Yes. Yes. That's why you should stay there. If you're not attacked on the job, you will be attacked at home. And if you're not attacked at home, all you got to do is come to church. You will be attacked here. <laughs> the enemy will attack us. Yes. But we've got to hold on. Yes. For every child of God has gone through something in their lives at one time or another. And these are words of whispering hope that, that, that hears with confidence. For they are the private testimony of a, of a man who knows what it's like 
to be in sorrow's table and in the shadow of death's valley. Yes. This is the valedictory of one who has been stained with the indelible ink of sin and is now able to rejoice that his sin has been saturated in the blood of the Lamb and his iniquity has been pardoned yes. by the Prince of Peace. Yes. This is a testimony of a valor valedictorian who earned his BA, his born again degree yes. in the school of hard knocks. Yes. The testimony of one who meandered in the valley of sin, labored in the valley of, of, of death, lingered in the valley of sorrow, and had to stump out a rebellion of his own soul. The testimony of one whose character stayed with the, with the indelible ink of sin, yet received pardon and forgiveness for sin and iniquity. The testimony of one who surely deserved the wrath of God, but yet came to know the mercy of eternal life. Amen. David, church, David is the one who at least ought to be entitled to this exuberant chronicle of confidence. For he has been in battle with a bear. He has licked a lion and been placed in combat with a giant named Goliath. He has skillfully and delicately hand handled the harp in King Saul's court and was a benefactor of intense loyalty and at the same time the target of intense hatred. The lyrics of this particular psalm could be sung by one who not only had countless enemies, but had a friend in God. Amen. One who encountered shattered dreams and blasted up, yet was filled with optimism because he knew that his shepherd lives. Yes. One who had been to hell time and time again, but still had hope in heaven. Yes. One who deserved the wrath of God, but came to know the mercies of the God he had angered. Now, we all, Thelma, can testify to that. For all of us have messed up at some time or the other in our lives, and yet God has brought us a mighty long way. We haven't arrived yet. We still have problems. We still have flaws in our Christian lives, but yet God is merciful, isn't he? Amen. He's merciful and he's long suffering to each and every one of us. And we should be able to identify with the author of this text for, don't you dare think that David was holy all his life and he was not sinful all his life. And now this ought to give us some hope this afternoon. Yes. Because it tells me that no matter how low we get, yes. God, I, I said God, yes. God can pull us up. Yes. And we must understand he is not like us mm. to hold things against each yes. other. But he, uh, but, but he forgives mm. and he has a way of forgetting. Now, I want to believe that's why this text has always been used as the ultimate declaration of hope in hopeless situations. Yes, sir. Perhaps there's nobody here in this, in this place who's feeling hopeless hmm. this afternoon. Yeah. But, 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 but let me just, could it not be that the Spirit impressed me to talk on this because somebody here is in a mood of hopelessness, is feeling that way. Somebody is in the dark air of the Christian experience called night. Somebody here is probably going through something that makes them feel like a modern day Job. That's the reason this passage has often been used as a, as a universal remedy for all man's ears. For everyone in life has cried sometime or the other. Whether it was for joy or whether it was for pain. Whether it was for ecstasy or disappointment. We all can identify with crying. 
It is a common denominator among all of God's children whose eulogy has or has not been preached. You see, tears are therapeutic. For the ability to cry is a God-given ability that God gave to his crown and creation. And if it wasn't for tears, many of us oh, we would have been shattered in thousands of pieces yes. because we couldn't cry. You see, um, women, women have no problem crying. <laughs> they cry when they're happy, yes. cry when they're sad, yes. they, cry, they cry with joy and yes. sorrow, they, they just cry. But, but some of us men, some of us refuse to cry because we believe that crying isn't manly. And it will make us look a bit sissified if we cry. And that is why some of our wives are going through so much heartaches and backaches and setbacks and troubles with us because we wouldn't cry. If you at least fake it. <laughs> It could help the situation. <laughs> I tell you, you get home, you you get home on one time with your wife and you just cry. You see how happy she would be. <laughs> uh, you see. Uh, you see, David didn't have a problem crying. He knew what it meant to hold on to a brief that sticks around. Mm. He had to cry for his son Absalom. Mm. He had to cry. You see, it, you see, it is, it is the ultimate answer to the all perplexing question and the discouraging doubt. Weeping may endure for a night. But joy comes in the morning. Right. You know, we must realize the word that the word may mm. is the mood of probability. Yes. The perhaps or the maybe. It says in life you may cry, but it didn't stop there. It went on to say, but, but joy comes. The joy comes. The mood of certainty, the mood of reality. It doesn't matter how much you cry. Yes. If you would just hold on, yes. you know that joy has to come. Yes. Because just as morning follows the night, joy follows tears. Amen. Amen. You see, in the psalmist's mind, weeping comes as a result of pain, mm. problems, suffering, social and financial crises, and spiritual setbacks. I don't know about you, but I believe in my heart that your presence here this afternoon, in, in, this afternoon is indicative of your desire to believe that tears are temporary yes. and that joy one day will be a permanent yes. reality. Yes. I believe that the flower of character is watered by the tears of tribulation mm. for a yes. child of God. Yes, weeping may endure for night, but joy comes in the morning. But I have a question to you this afternoon. If weeping is going to endure for a night, I want to know how long is my night? That's my topic and that's my concern. How long is the night? You see, that's my question. Like I can deal with the weeping if I don't have to cry too long. But, 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 but when you read your children in the word of God by putting them to put, 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 putting them to church, get them to church school, have morning and evening worship, get them to church every Sabbath, get them to have a knowledge of God and introduce them to the spirit of prophecy. You live the Christ-like life before them. But yet, when they get older, when they, when they get old enough to leave the house, they walk out of the church, mm. look down on the church, and wouldn't even thereby come by the church. And when they do come by the church, they look like the house of 
Dennis Rodman and Jezebel, and you have been praying for them all along, and you want to know yes. oh, how long is the night? You still can't get an answer. How long is the night? Well, we are living in a nighttime era, church. You may not believe it, but we are in a nighttime experience here on planet Earth. That's right. It's the darkest. It's the darkest this Earth has ever been. But when we got people like like uh, Boris and Trump, I say this is a dark time we're living in. Yes. When, 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 when you have children who are abusing and killing their parents, who brought them into this world, yes, put food in their mouths, clothes on their backs, and a roof over their head, and, and would curse them out when they want to say, uh, when they want to, I say, all you have to do is tell them, can you wash those dishes you ate out of? And they curse you out. You, after all, you don't cook the food, why can't you wash the dishes? And they curse you out. And how long is the night? How long? How long? Is that's, that's enough to make anybody cry. Brothers and sisters, I know we are planning on going to heaven. Amen. And the morning is, is coming. But long, how long is the night? I know God is going to dry my weeping eyes. But how long am I going to have to cry down here? Maybe, maybe. Maybe if I knew just how long I had to cry, had to wait for the morning, it would help me to make it through the night. But the problem is I really don't know how long the night is. So I have a problem making it through the night. Brothers and sisters, I don't know about you, but I'm preaching to me. Yes. You may not get your blessing, but I'm going to get mine, honey. Right. I'm going to get mine. You may not get your blessing. You see, you may not be able to identify what, with what this old man is preaching about. But, but, but I'm preaching to me. But I, I, I want to know about my night. Mm -hmm. I don't know how you feel, but so, uh, so, sometimes it, it, seems, it seems like the, the older I get, my nights last longer and longer. And that's why I would like to, to have a time barometer for this night I am living in. These may be sunshine days for you, but a curtain of midnight draped around my soul exists. And even though I look the same, talk the same, and act the same, there has been a change in my outlook on life. You see, we really don't know what's happening in this wicked world. But Ellen White said if we could just tear back the curtain that separates us from divine presence, we would observe that with every move we make, there's a battle going on. The enemy is raging against us. But thank God for the angels protecting us who excel in strength. We are in a battle down here, and these are awesome deadly and demonic times. All we know is that in spite of what we go through, there is still hope. Yes. Yes. I said there is still hope yes. for a child of God and your hope should not be in your spouse. Mm. Amen. Amen. Your hope should not be in your boss. Amen. Your hope should not be in your children or your family. Your hope shouldn't be in the money you have in the bank or the job you have or the fine house you have. It should not be in the church leaders of the church. But your hope, your hope ought to be in Jesus Christ. But if your hope is not in him, it's nothing more than wishy-washy sand. I've got a hope and it tells me that joy will come in the morning. But yet we must still live and language in, in, in the inescapable reality of the night experience. Yes. How long is the night going to last for a child of God? How long the night of verbal and physical abuse? How long the night of misery, speechless sorrow, 
and inescapable iniquity due to sin. How long the night of salty tears, which never seems to dry up? How long the night of loneliness and depression, when there appears no relief in sight? How long the night when, when you can't tell your closest friend what you are going through and dare to even tell yourself what you are going through? How long the night? Many of us weep for the simplest of reasons. But in my life I've learned not to be concerned with life's hardships and life's indignities and injustices. I'm learning to remember that God said weeping is going to come in the night, but joy will come in the morning. So I'm not worried about the tribulation and the temptation. My concern is the length of the night. For there are nights when seconds seem like minutes. Minutes seem like hours. Hours seem like days. Days seem like weeks. Weeks seem like years. Months, months seem like years. And, and, and so on and so on. And then all of a sudden, how long is the night? Oh, my friends. I don't know where you slept last night, but perhaps it was on a king-sized bed of ease, or a queen-sized bed of happiness, or a twin-sized bed of sadness, or a water bed of contentment, or a sleeping bag of disappointment. I don't know what kind of night you have been having. Maybe it was a night where when you had a series of success, victories. Perhaps it was a night where, where you had failure and defeat. But one thing I know, a morning has to come. Yes, yes. No. <coughs> Excuse me. There are nights when you just want the night to go by. For have you noticed? That is at night time when the sick get sicker, passion runs rampant, anxiety heightens, children behave the worst, death does its dirty job, the church makes blood, homes are broken up, and the gates of hell break loose. It's at night time when we are whipped with a belt of pain, burned with a fire problem, drink from the cup of trial, locked in the shelf of suffering and kicked with the boots of hard knocks. Yes. And during those times we ask the Lord, how long is the night? Don't you know, Lord, enough is enough. Mm -hmm. Brothers and sisters, this nighttime fact matter is so important that we need to give some critical study and thought to the nighttime factor in religion itself. Where you are, whether you are aware or not, I must let you know that the plan of salvation hangs and hinges on nighttime experiences. Some strange and unusual experiences which took place in the Bible, in the plan of salvation, happened at nighttime. Could it be that God does some of his best teaching, working, and healing at nighttime? Psalms 19 verse 2 says, Day unto day others preach, and night unto night shows knowledge. There's some knowledge to be gained at night time yes, that cannot be gained in the sunshine of the day. There are some lessons God has to teach us in the night hour of the moon that we cannot trust to be taught in the daytime of the sunshine. In other words, God allows some of us to cry so we can understand that he can dry our weeping eyes. Sometimes God will allow you to lose a job so he can give you the job he wanted you to have in the first place. In the Bible, God often worked at night time. Yes. For Jacob wrestled with the angel at night. God sent the death angel to Egypt at night. Mm -hmm. But the shelter saw the handwriting on the wall at night. Yes. 
said the disciples went fishing and caught nothing at night. There was a prayer meeting at Philippi when, when Paul started praying and Silas started singing and the jailhouse started rocking and rolling at night. Jesus was born with the angels singing glory to God in the highest peace, goodwill at night. Uh, Jesus spoke to the winds and the waves saying, peace be still at night. Jesus, uh, Pete, Nicodemus came to Jesus at night. Jesus prayed in the garden of Gethsemane and sweated blood at night. Jesus hung on the cross on, fri uh, on Friday. And even though the clock of time said 3 p.m., yes, the clock of divinity said it is at night. For the Bible said, Darkness. the sun refused to shine. Yes. When the sun doesn't shine, it's nighttime. Yes. Yes. How long is the night is my question, Sister Gardner. And in order for us to understand and deal with our nighttime predicament, we must always listen to and look at the testimony of others yes. who have had some nighttime experiences. Yes. Now, God wants us to know that no matter how hard it may be for any of us here today, no matter how dismal our days or how miserable our nights, someone else has been where we are. Mm. Amen. Amen. And they have overcome. Mm. They have made it. That's why and that's why I, I, I like what some of the writers testified about what the Lord has done for them during their nighttime experiences. Some of us like to read Psalm 91, which says, God is a refuge and a fortress for he who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Yes. Because you have made the Lord your habitation, there shall no evil come to you, no. neither shall any plague come near your house. Mm. We like that. Mm. We like ask and it shall be given. Seek and you shall find. Knock and it shall be opened. We like that. And all the blessings. But I stop my head to tell you, we also don't mind Job and John who look forward and by faith could see the day when the morning stars shall sing together and the sons of God shall shout with joy. And we, sh we should be shouting every now and then down here. Yes. You know, we should shout down here. Yes. Doesn't it make you feel good when you read weeping may endure for a night yes, but joy comes in the morning? Doesn't it make you feel good to know that one day it will all be over? Yes. Brothers and sisters, I, I don't know about you, but I have been waiting on joy. And this is not some imitation joy, but this is real joy. Yes. Joy the world can't give and joy the world can't take away. Yes. It doesn't matter what type of house you live in, what type of job you have or what type of car you have, you drive, that's not real joy. Also. For I am talking about the joy that comes from above. Yes. For even if you're on food stamps yes. or your check is late, you can still sing and have joy. Yes. I am sick and tired of living down here. I, I, I want to go home, but my home is glory land. Amen. I am a pilgrim just passing through this earth is not my home, for God is my father, and where my father is, that's where I ought to be. That's why I'm tired of living down here. I'm tired of hard-headed husbands, and wild wives, and conquered children, and cantankerous church members, and children, and fickle friends and hypocritical church members yes, and sir. passive pastors. Yes, I got everybody in there. Yes. <laughs> I don't know how long the night has been or how long the night will be, but this one thing I know, yeah. I have the assurance there is a better day. Yes. Amen. Amen. I know yes. God still moves in wondrous ways, in mysterious ways wonders to perform. Yes. 
I know all things work together for good to those who love the Lord. But how long is the night, Earl? Well, we know we need to wait on the Lord and be of good courage. We know that Jesus is near to comfort and cheer just when we need him most. But how long is the night, Earl? Well, I, I, I know that earth has no sorrow that heaven cannot heal. Yes. Well, well, we know he knows just how much we can bear. We know there's a brighter day somewhere, but still we need to know how long is the night, Earl? Well, let me tell you, let me tell you, glad you asked. Let me tell you, the longer the night, the less time we have to wait. <laughs> and we need to understand that we can't rush through the night. Yes, sir. We can't skip over the night. Yes. We can't avoid the night. Yes. For the Bible gives us the assurance that, that he who endures, that, 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 that means to last. Yes. That means to hold on. Mm. That means to hang in there. Mm. That means don't throw in the towel. Yes. That means don't give up. That means if you get a that means if you cry, get a hanky and dry your weeping eyes and keep on going for he or she who endures to the end will be saved. Amen. If you really want to know how long is the night, let me tell you, not long, Amen. not long. For God will soon end this nighttime living experience in this wicked world. And the same God who closes the curtain of the night is the same God who opens the curtains of the morning. Yes. How long is the night? Not long. For he has promised to wipe the tears from our eyes. How long? Not long. It, it, it will be soon. One morning when this life is over and we will fly away. How long? Not long. He promised me a city yes, sir. and a crystal clear stream yes, sir. and a tree of life yeah. for the healing of the nation. A Lord. city where there's no more sadness. A city where there's no more sorrow. A city yes, where there's no more dying. Yes, a city where there's no more crying. Yes. A city where there's no more Boris Johnson yes. and Donald Trump. A city where there are no more nights. Yes, so I'm saying to you, when you go through your night and the storms of life beat relentlessly against you, yes. don't quit in the storm. Mm. Don't abandon your best. Don't participate in mutiny. Mm. Don't take crack. Don't take Tylenol. Yes. Don't lower your sails. Don't jump overboard. Yes. Don't sing the blues, but sing what a friend we have in Amen. Jesus. Stop forming a pity party for yourself yes. and repeat the words, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Amen. Too many people jump off the ship when things are not going right. That's but right. this ship is not the Titanic. Uh -huh. This is an everlasting ship. Yes. It was not made with mortal hands. But divinity carved it out somewhere back in the Garden of Eden yes. Yes. when man went astray and Jesus came down and said upon this rock, I built my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. It may sail, but it won't prevail because the God I serve doesn't slumber or sleep. Amen. Yeah. As a result, he sometimes changes your water into wine, yes. your misfortune into fortune, yes. your scars into stars, yes. your burdens into blessings, yes. your trials into triumph, and your stumbling blocks into stepping stones. Yes. If you just stay strong and lay hold on the word of God, your change Amen. will come. Amen. So when the son of righteousness returns for the second time, when the bright and morning stars come back, yes, we sir. can say good night yes. to pain, good night to backache, mm. good night to arthritis, yes. good night to, to, to breast it. Brexit. Good night yes, to unruly sir. children. Good night to, to abuse. Yes, sir. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Good night to poverty. 
Good night to loneliness. Good night to backbiting. Good night to staring and nominating committee. Good night to board and business meeting. Good night to sin and temptation. Good night to death. Why? Because weeping may endure for a night, but joy, sweet joy. I said sweet joy in the morning. The night is far spent and the day is at hand. Soon, the King of Glory is going to blow across those clouds. Yes. We need to be prepared for such a time. Yes, sir. I'd like for everybody to stand. That's why, like I said to you earlier, that's why, regardless of what else happens in life, I stake my claim with Jesus. Amen. I rest my case squarely with him. For at the cross, we see mercy at its best. Yes. At the cross, mercy is grace, yes. and grace is free. Yes. At the cross, the dying thief tells my story. Yes, sir. We suffer justly for our deeds, but that man in the middle has done no wrong, and that safety registers my grief. Lord, when thou comest into thy kingdom, remember me. In mercy, Jesus remembers, for years ago, I saw the light, yes, and he sir. has remembered in my success and in my failure, in my pleasure and in my pain, yes. in my ups and in my downs, in my brightness and in my dark, he has remembered. Amen. Wherever, whoever, whatever, whenever, however, forever, he has raised and he has remembered. And one of these days, I said one of these days, but one of these days, when it's all over, when time, like a weary traveler, shall lay his hand, head in the bosom of eternity. When the saints go marching in, yes. when from Mount Pisco's lofty high top I rise yes. to see the everlasting prize. When the works of God is ended and the morning comes, I shall see him yes. in the fullness of his splendor. Yes. And over your name, Beulah land, yes. my canticle of praise will set on grace and on mercy all over God's heaven. That shall be my song, Amen. saved by grace yes. and spared by mercy. Amen. Thank you, Lord, for your unmerited favor to a sinner like me. Amen. Saved by grace and spared by mercy. God has spoken to your heart this evening once again. And he's saying, you are going through some night time, but you must always remember that I have promised to be there with you. He's saying, even though you haven't followed me all the way, I know your heart. I know what you're going through, and I want to help you. I want to heal you. I want to encourage you. He's saying, I have a place prepared for you. I want you to be a part of my eternal kingdom. Yes. He's saying, you really believe in me and you, have, you are going through this night season. I want you to go forward and let the pastor shake your hand and pray for you. He's saying, do that now. That's what he's saying. He's saying, come as you are. Stop trying to fix yourself up. Come as you are. Because when you try to fix yourself up, you just make matters worse. He says, I have sent Earl Liber there to your church to call you, to speak to you. Go forward and let Earl shake your hand. Give me your heart. That's what he said. Who will be the first? Just as I am, just as I am, without one plea, but that your blood was shed for me. And as you bid me come to the old Lamb of God, I come. So come as you are. You know, sometimes we 
We spend too much time fixing up ourselves and we just make matters worse. He says, come as you are. You know, I, I remember 